Okay, so we're going to begin by cleaning all this up. And especially here, you can see the, the air fuel ratio has run loose. And the threads look poor, so I'll probably be helical in that boat hole. That one too, if it needs it. Okay, then I'm going to go from the inside. I'm going to mark, measure and mark the height of this uh, with a flat edge across this and measure the distance. Cause the very important that this don't move, but I'm going to knock, there's a seal down in there. That is for your tack shaft. I'll be driving that seal out and replacing it. Even though we will not be using the manual tack drive, uh, it still needs to be sealed because there's that's an oil leaker right there. Okay, I'll clean all my gasket surfaces off. Then we'll put our shutdown shaft seal. I'll show you how to do that. And our throttle shaft seal, I'll show you how to do that. I got a little bit of cleaning to do though. So, I also got the wedding ring spacers <clears throat> to install here. And we'll put the other three pumps in. And then uh, other than that, will be a matter of, of uh, boat and stuff on. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. Clean, 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 clean. All them seats have to be clean. Okay, I realize this is repetition, but it's, a you know, till you get the hang of it, I'm gonna do it. See the slot? The slot lines up with that hole in that slot there. Okay? You line that up best you can. You verify it's clean in there. No grit that I have put the three uh, spacers in place. Verify that your rack is pulled all the way back with the pin in the groove. So, okay. Now, you can see the slot at the top of the pump rides in. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little tit down in there on that lifter. And that's where that rides. So let's drop it in very carefully. Okay. I'm going to prepare a bonnet here and a bonnet seal. Put that in and then check my timing. Okay. I'm going to pull my pin up. If you do this on the truck and you have the throttle pulled to full position and the shutoff solenoid off, this will automatically spring back, the rack wheel. Okay, so you don't have to do this this way every time. Okay, let's see if you can see the edge of that pin is lined up pretty well with the edge of that rack slot the edge of the rack slot okay so we're good on that one now let me go the other way okay now you'll notice it's not a hundred percent the back of the slot but it's so close it's not even funny now i'm gonna work it back and forth a couple times and double check extra uh, bonnet seals because they are easy to pinch <clears throat> and I mean it, it's just so 
much easier to have one pay a few dollars for another one than to have to stop what you're doing and go get one because they do pinch easy because this is springy and you have to roll this a lot of times to get this on low cam so that you can even get these start and again the reason i'm replacing the bonnets is because the spline in them has well the pump had over a million miles on it i believe what the customer said so the splines have rusted out now that's what these felts are for but a million miles and multiple years uh nothing lasts forever so okay i purposely put this in the tooth out to show an example see when you go all the way in in position of the rack see the gap between the back now go the backwards raise it up pull it on back and we got overhang so you got overhang there and it don't go all the way to the back so it's a tooth out maybe two teeth out just wanted to show you okay notice the two different sides of the seal this side goes in your lip goes out this is for your throttle shaft it goes in there it goes in fairly easy you can just about push it in place with your thumb now i have found that an 11 16th socket of course this is chrome it ain't real heavy you don't have to be 11 16th but something of that size covers the seal quite well to drive it in okay and just knock it in you don't have to drive it till it bottoms but drive it in at least till this edge is flush with the housing or deeper okay we're going to get ready to install the manual shutdown shaft so this snap ring I need to go here on the outside. Okay, I've done got my seal in place. I'll lubricate the seal. This will slide through. And on the inside, there's some pieces that have to go on there. A spring, a block of metal, and there's a snap ring that holds it in. So, okay, this will slide through. As it slides through, the spring will sit right here. <clears throat> Something like that. Then this will sit in there. Sorry. That will sit in there and the spring will hook into this piece right here. Okay, let me try to break this down a little better. So your shaft goes through, you already put your lip seal in, you already put a snap ring on that keeps it from going too far in. Come through here, you see your spring, this part of your spring sets right here in this little seat. Now this piece here, so you have this adjustment that goes down, this piece right here rides against that right there. And this snaps over this. Goes from back here and snaps across. I'll take a better picture in just a second. Okay, I'm probably making this a lot more complicated than it needs to be. So when you install your seal, you do not have to bottom it out, but you do have to go deep enough that when the snap ring is in place and the shaft is all the way against it, that you will have enough clearance on this side to install this snap ring. Okay, spring goes here. This little flipper right here catches in the housing right there. Okay, this part of the spring comes on the back side. Which actually, it needs to snap down into place. It goes down in there and catches on that groove. And that's what makes it springy. So when you turn that, 
that forces this, which forces this flapper around, which will kill, shove the rack in and kill the engine. That's your manual shutdown. So seal, snap ring, shaft, spring, block, snap ring. Okay, I've got a lot going on here, so I'm going to make an attempt to do this. I lubricate my seal area lightly. I have my half moon keeper. I put a little 77 glue to hold it in place. This will go in here, but as it goes through there, it has to go through this first. And if you'll notice, it's got a key cut out in it for that one. Then finally it goes through this, like so. And the boat goes in there and pinches it. See, it's got a place for the, for the keeper also. And the boat holds it in place. So, let's get busy. Okay. So what we wanna do is, notice the arrangement. See the wear spot here, that contacts here. Notice the arrangement of the keyway. Little finagling, but there it is. Now we'll put our bolt in there. All right, so we got the shutdown shaft in place. We got the throttle shaft in place. Everything's cleaned up. I need to heat coil this boat hole, which actually looks like it's got some threads in it. I'll, I'll double check it. Uh, we got that down in there. Now, before we put this on, we need to measure the distance with a flat edge across this from the flat edge to the top of this. And I have a sheet that I will share with you. There is a spec for that. Okay. And once we then we'll put this on, probably tomorrow's episode, we'll put this on and uh, reseal the dash pot, start boating everything back up that come off of it there. Okay. Then we still got to put on the fuel uh, gallery cover, all the covers, the oil gallery covers back here and such. And then we'll uh, use some cleaner to cut the oil off of it and shoot the paint. That's the purpose in these plugs is to cap off anything that paint will hurt. And then we'll give it a good, a good paint job, some cap paint. So... And once we get through this part, we'll be doing the air fuel ratio, which it's a mess right now, but you'll see, I'll go slow. So we'll build the air fuel ratio, it bolts here. And then the time in advance, which is right over here. We'll build it also, go through that with you. And uh, then maybe you can uh, do one on your own.